Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Arjawi. A telephone call was held today between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Both leaders exchanged good wishes on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing both countries and people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns and further growth and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah. Both leaders exchanged good wishes on the advent of the holy month of Ramadan, wishing both countries and their people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns and further growth and enhancement. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 23 for the year 2022, restructuring the National Committee on the Prohibition, Development, Production, Stockpiling of Chemical Weapons, and on their destruction. Under the edict, the committee shall be chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and its members will include representatives from the Bahrain Defense Force, First Deputy Chairman, the Supreme Council for the Environment, Second Deputy Chairman, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunication, the General Directorate of Criminal Investigation and Forensic Science at the Ministry of the Interior, the Custom Affairs from the Ministry of the Interior, the General Directorate of Civil Defense at the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs, the Ministry of Oil, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning, the University of Bahrain. The committee members shall serve for renewable three-year terms. If the membership of any of the members becomes vacant for any reason, a representative of the same entity shall replace them until the end of their term. International healthcare professionals from Pfizer, Google, and Meta joined Bahrain's healthcare specialists at the Harvard COVID-19 International Symposium held at the Wyndham Grand Manama to discuss pandemic learnings and Bahrain's successful mitigation measures. The hybrid symposium, powered by Cisco and co-led and managed by Harvard University, welcomed speakers from global health institutes to contribute to panel discussions on genomic surveillance and testing of COVID-19 pandemic, therapeutic efforts for COVID-19, global and national response to COVID-19, social platforms and global response to COVID-19 experience. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa delivered the symposium's keynote address, during which he highlighted Bahrain's rapid and comprehensive pandemic response. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed cited His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's directives and the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's leadership as being crucial to the success of Bahrain's public health response. During his address, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah detailed the strategies that Bahrain employed to mitigate the spread and impact of the virus. Measures included provision of free PCR tests, treatment for those infected, and vacations for both citizens and residents. Harvard University spokesperson Marcia Castro expressed pleasure to discuss the pandemic with global peers, including and hearing about Bahrain's response to the pandemic. She said the percentage of vaccinated individuals continues to increase worldwide. Bahrain is a country that is preemptive rather than reactive, with over 82% of the Bahraini population having received two doses of the vaccine and 85% of the eligible population having received a booster dose. Infectious diseases consultant and microbiologist at the Bahrain Defense Force Hospital, member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Qahtani, participated in the genomic surveillance and testing of COVID-19 pandemic panel. Also present were the infectious and internal disease consultant at Salmania Medical Complex and member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Jamila Salman, the Chief Executive Officer of Primary Healthcare Centers and members of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Dr. Jalila Sayyid Jawad. The Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs has announced that the Moon Sighting Panel met today on the 1st of April to receive news and testimonies of sightings of the crescent of the holy month of Ramadan from Bahrain and the Islamic world, signaling the advent of the holy month. The chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Muhammad bin Rashid Al Khalifa, announced that tomorrow, April the 2nd, shall be the first day of the holy month of Ramadan.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali bin Saleh al Saleh, chaired the first extraordinary session of the council in the fourth session of the fifth legislative term. The council was informed of the messages received from the speaker of the representative council regarding a draft law amending some provisions of the social insurance law. The council approved a draft law amending Article 231 of the Penal Code promulgated by legislative Decree 15 of 1976. The Council also approved in principle the recommendation of the Services Committee regarding law by Decree No. 21 for 2020 regarding retirement funds and pensions. And the Council approved in principle the recommendations of the Services Committee amending some provisions of Law No. 13 for 1975 regarding the organization of pensions and retirement benefits for government employees accompanying Decree No. 4 for the year 2021 and a draft law amending some provisions of the Social Insurance Law promulgated by Legislative Decree 24 of 1976, attached to Decree No. 5 of 2021, which aims to ensure the sustainability of pension and insurance funds. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to consolidate the bonds of cooperation, friendship, cultural and civilized communication with Asian countries and various countries of the world on the basis of friendship and mutual respect within the framework of the wise vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa regarding the consolidation of the principles of tolerance, dialogue and peaceful coexistence among people of different civilizations, cultures and religions. At the closing ceremony of the second edition of the Yafa program organized by the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for Diplomatic Studies over a period of two weeks, the Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed his appreciation for the Academy's efforts in hosting 20 diplomatic personalities from member states of the Asian Cooperation Dialogue Forum and informing them closely of the Kingdom's rich cultural and historical heritage, high-end diplomatic principles and the comprehensive and sustainable development, civilized and democratic achievements it witnesses. He praised the support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to implement the International Diplomats Program, the AFA, since its launch within the FIKRA competition for the government innovation four years ago, leading to the completion of its second edition in conjunction with the Kingdom's presidency of the Dialogue Asian Cooperation this year, continuing the role as a founding and active member of the Forum for 20 years and strengthening its honorable presence in various regional and international organizations. I got that this, uh, when I uh, reach here, this beautiful Paul country, I saw the very diversity, not only the development, I saw the cultural diversity, the friendly peoples, and amazing hospitality. So it's been my first time to visit Bahrain, and I really enjoyed my two weeks uh, stay here because I learned a lot about the history, heritage, culture, uh, political system, foreign policy and economic policy of the Kingdom of Bahrain. And I really appreciate the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain for providing us this opportunity to participate in this program. I would like to thank you, Diafa, for giving us this opportunity to land on this wonderful country as well as to experience its culture, cuisine, art, and of course the academics, politics, geography of the country. The joint Bahraini-Turkish Committee held its seventh meeting. The session was attended by the Finance and National Committee Minister Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the Turkish Minister of Treasury and Finance Dr. Nuruddin Nibati and businessman. The Turkish Minister was briefed about Bahrain's development strides and the role played by the Economic Development Board and promoting the kingdom and global markets and attract foreign direct investments. The Minister of Finance and National Economy noted the deep-rooted ties and shared keenness on further economic cooperation and boosting trade exchanges, citing the signing of agreements to encourage and protect investments and avoid double taxation. He said the volume of trade exchanges has reached $600 million annually noting that Bahrain has granted Turkey the status of accredited partner for the International Center for Sea and Air Freight Services in the Kingdom, which would further strengthen economic, commercial and investment partnership between the two countries. The minister also highlighted the initiatives to support the economic recovery plan in the logistics sector, namely increasing the destinations of flights to more than 70 destinations, 
raising the capacity of air freight in addition to increasing the capacity at Sheikh Khalifa port. The EDB Chief Executive Officer Khalid Ibrahim Hamedan welcomed the Turkish business delegation, stressing the Council's role in support of investors to set up their project in Bahrain. He underlined Bahrain's keen interest in supporting joint cooperation with Turkey and attracting global investments and capitals, which would benefit different sectors. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, Zayed bin Rashid Azayani, called on to strengthen global cooperation aimed at accelerating the recovery of the tourism sector from the effects of the pandemic. The Minister affirmed the readiness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to exchange experience and expertise in this field. This came during his participation in a seminar held on the sideline of the launch of the IMTM Tourism Exhibition in the State of Israel under the title Innovation and Tourism. The Minister added that modern technologies are the future of tourism sector and this sector depends on technologies that cover big data, artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality. He also indicated that technology-based innovation is a key to a rapid recovery from the catastrophic negative effects that hit the tourism sector due to the pandemic. As Ayani noted in the same context that the great digital readiness enjoyed by the Kingdom of Bahrain enables the various components of the tourism sector to adopt the latest innovative applications in the field of information and communication technology. The Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organized this afternoon the final race of the 2021-2022 racing season, held on the cup of the Vice President of the Supreme Council for the Environment. Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Authority of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, and the cup of his son, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The STC Cups, the Golden, the Bahrain Golden Cup, the Owners Cup, the Rauda Cup, and the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club Cup. The event took place on the club's racing track in Al Rafa in Sakhir, in the presence of a number of their Highnesses and representatives of STC, the sponsor of the race audiences of equestrian and horse racing enthusiasts. The winners of the race cups were crowned as His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa presented the cup of His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa to the winner Alan Smith and His Highness also presented the cup of His Highness to Hadi Ibrahim Al Afu while the Vice President for the Government Affairs at STC Sheikh Ziad bin Faisal Al Khalifa presented the Bahrain Gold Cup to His Highness Sheikh Sultan al-Din bin Mohammed bin Salman al-Khalifa, while the Vice President of Financial Affairs at STC, Ahmed al-Jodar, presented the third round cup to Mohammed Khalid Abdul Rahim and the STC Cup for the fifth round to the winning owner, Ibrahim al-Afu. The Executive Director of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club, Sheikh Salman bin Rashid al-Khalifa, presented the club's cup to Hadi Ibrahim al-Afu and the owner's cup to the winning owner, Abdullah Fawzi Nas, while the official of the Arabian horses at the Royal Stables, Mrs. Louise presented the Ar Rauda Cup to the winning track, Abdullah Kweti. The patronage of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the Royal University for Women hosted a ceremony at the Gulf Hotel in honor of its 12th and 13th batches of bachelors and master's graduates. In attendance were the Injaz Bahrain Chairperson, Her Highness Sheikh Hissa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, Al Mabarra Al Khalifiya Chairperson, Deputy Chairperson, His Her Highness Sheikh Naila bint Hamad Al Khalifa and diplomats. Her Highness Sheikh Hassa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa and Her Highness Sheikh Naila bint Hamad Al Khalifa presented the graduates with their certificates in the presence of Dr. Basma Suleiman Al Zamil and the RUW President, Professor Yusra Muzeri. Professor Muzeri addressed the ceremony expressing thanks and gratitude 
to Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for her continuous patronage of the university's graduation ceremonies. She congratulated Her Royal Highness on being selected to be at the forefront of the list published by the Contemporary and Historical Women Leadership Initiative that was announced by the delegation of the European Union to the United Nations and the permanent mission of Gabon on UNESCO's launch of the International Day of Women and Multilateralism. She said Her Royal Highness's efforts to advance the status of Bahraini women in all the fields represents a pioneering role model for the university students to follow in the path of empowerment and progress to achieve honorable achievements at the local and international levels. A total of 260 students graduated, 101 from the College of Finance and Administration for undergrad programs, 44 from the College of Law, 89 from the College of Art and Design for undergraduate programs, and 26 with master's degree. The Kingdom of Bahrain concluded its participation in Expo 2020 Dubai, bringing an end to six months of continuous work to promote Bahrain's cultural elements through its pavilion. The National Pavilion received during this period 1.6 million visitors from all over the world. On this occasion, the President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bin Muhammad Al Khalifa, dedicated the pavilion's success to the Prime Symbol Order of Culture, His Majesty the King, and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, who backed the achievement made in the Expo. She also indicated that the pavilion will be moved to the city of Manama to be a new cultural icon that adds to the city's urban, civilizational, and cultural elements, expressing her thanks to the United Arab Emirates and to the government of Dubai for providing all support for the success of Bahrain's participation in the Expo. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,233,266 took the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,260,844 had taken the second dose and 975,205 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 6,959 with 939 recoveries, 719 registered new cases, and one death. There are 20 active cases receiving treatment and four patients in critical condition. Bahrain has recorded 1,471 total deaths, while 546,039 have recovered. The ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.